James Bean. Welcome to Spiritual Awakening Radio. A sought song without walls. A classroom without walls. A spiritual gathering without walls. Exploring the world of spirituality, comparative religion, sacred texts of the East and West, meditation, near-death experiences, the vegan diet, and other ahimsa ethics. Education for a more peaceful planet. This week's program is titled The Sound of Light, Surat Shabd Yoga Meditation Practice. In other words, Inner Light and Sound Meditation Practice. As of late, I've been sharing about the yoga of sound, how that in all of the world, religions, scriptures, and mystic traditions, for many generations, millennia actually, human beings have reported hearing a divine sound, descriptions of a transcendental hearing are found in the writings of the mystics, east and west. There is a third eye and a divine form of seeing with the eye of the soul, a spiritual seeing. And there is a kind of third ear or spiritual hearing, transcendental hearing, also at the heart of the mystic tradition. Spiritual Awakening Radio explores the world of spirituality, comparative religion, and other books that matter, East and West, every week at this time. My website is at this address, spiritualawakeningradio.com. My email address is james at spiritualawakeningradio.com. This week, the mechanics of inner light and sound meditation some detail about the practice. And detail is hard to come by in this soundbite media culture, but I like going into such detail. You know, I've watched a number of programs, a number of cable television documentaries on Dead Sea Scrolls, Gnostic Gospels, and other texts and it's very strange. Rarely do you actually encounter readings from these books on these programs. It's amazing. You can have documentaries about the discovery of ancient texts, and yet the contents of these ancient texts is almost off the radar screen entirely. So I have come very much to value detail delving into a subject, exploring it fully. Online, I wrote a blog. It's at medium.com, which is Twitter's blogging site for writers. It's titled, Hearing the Celestial Sound Current During Meditation, Discourse on Inner Sound Meditation. And it actually turned out to be one of my most popular blogs at Medium. It contains a lot of specific, valuable guidance about sound meditation practice. And evidently, there are people out there that value that guidance. It's always one of my top blogs whenever I check my stats at medium.com. So I want to share those passages I cite in this blog, share that with you, and share the details of the meditation practice called Surat Shabd Yoga as much as I can. Of course, these actual uh, complete instructions are only revealed at the time of one's initiation. And so I can't go beyond a certain point, but I can still go quite far and share some insight about the practice. For anyone who wants to learn the full practice of Surat Shabd Yoga, one must apply for initiation from a living teacher, a living master. One must also be vegan or vegetarian and be committed to a certain teetotaling lifestyle, no drugs, no alcohol, no meat, and to uh, be committed to meditating on a regular basis. So it's not for everyone, 
certain requirements must be met. But it's also given freely, without any cost whatsoever. It's for free for all those that see it and value it. It's a practice available. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Today I will share with you some information about this form of meditation that is fairly hard to come by otherwise. From light to sound, from form to formlessness, the stages of meditation in the path of the masters. By practicing devotion through these four techniques, manas, japa, also known as simran, or mantra, or zikr, these are all different terms for the repetition of a sacred name or names of God. By practicing devotion through these four techniques, manas, japa, known as simran to some, or mantras, or zikr, the recitation of a divine name, manas dhyana, or focus on the divine form, drishti sadhana, focus on the infinitesimal point, the third eye center and inner light, and four, nada sadhana yoga, the concentration on inner divine sounds, also referred to by some as surat shabd yoga, the practitioner consecutively transcends the realms of darkness, light, and sound, which cloak the supreme truth, the divine reality. These are various sequential stages of meditation. First, there is the meditation of physical form, either on the form of a master, a satguru, or any representation of the divine. There is meditation on the formless, subtle form, bindu, or inner light. The focus on the infinitesimally small point is followed by meditation on sound. And finally, there is meditation beyond any sound or form, the most subtle, unqualified form of the divine. These are the increasingly more subtle stages of meditation. In this way, we undertake sequential steps to accomplish complete focus, leading to the ultimate realization, or samadhi. Those are two paragraphs excerpted from the book Harmony of All Religions by Swami Sant Seviji Maharaj on inner light and sound meditation in the great world religions and the Sant tradition of mysticism based in India. You see here uh, a number of steps on this stairway to heaven. A number of steps. The repetition of a sacred name, the visualization of a sacred form, perhaps one's own teacher, and then focusing within, looking for an infinitesimal point in the darkness that blossoms into light. This is the third eye gazing within and eventually finding in that darkness light and the sadhana of inner sound, or nada, sometimes referred to as shabda, and referred to by some as the Kuan Yin method as well. Hearing the inner sound. Beyond the silence there is sound, or tones, or a ringing that's not tinnitus, but a sound that comes based on meditation and concentration and then disappears, or appears to disappear, when we break our concentration in meditation. And here Swami Sant Seviji offers a, a rare glimpse of beyond light and sound, which is hardly ever described by some traditions. When we go beyond the sound to the soundless state, beyond sound, the anadi, or nameless, level beyond the light and sound, veiled by the light and sound. The human condition, according to masters, Gnostics, Sufis, Sants, those mystics with advanced schools of spirituality, 
is that we human beings are souls wearing subtle bodies or coverings. Mysticism teaches that there are many layers of reality. There are other garments that will eventually be shed during journeys of ascension. These garments or subtle bodies have been given names in Hebrew, Greek, Coptic, Syriac, Arabic, Persian, Hindi, Urdu, and other languages. In addition to the garment of the physical body, each soul is wearing several other garments or subtle bodies, other sheaths that surround the soul, that allow the soul to connect to the various regions of creation. The astral body connects to the astral plane, and so on. Counting the physical plane as level one, level two is called by many the astral plane, made of astral stuff, astral substance, existing at a slightly different vibration in the astral region. Level three is the causal body, made of causal or akashic substance, inhabiting the causal plane. Level four is the mental body, made of mind substance, and is part of the mental plane or universal mind realm. The etheric body, level five, allows the soul to access that re region, which is a kind of semi-spiritual region, or the waiting room of heaven, the foyer before entering, if you will. Above these worlds of mind and matter, the soul resides in the timeless spiritual realm of truth. In Sufism, this is called Hak, H-A-Q. And in the Sant tradition, it's called Sat, or Satlok, or Sachkhand, also given names like Kivalya, which means oneness. And the upper level of Kivalya is uh, referred to as Radha Swami, Lord of the Soul, ultimate reality, the true abode, the true reality, Anami, the nameless realm, or Anadi, the soundless realm, beyond the light and sound, which act as kind of veils for the divine. And beyond these veils of light and sound, mind and matter, is this ultimate reality of God, the ultimate consciousness, ocean of love and all consciousness, the Lord of the soul. Souls are drops from the divine ocean and ultimately merge back into that divine ocean once again. And so these steps of meditation is all about making this transition of awareness from being totally aware only exclusively of the world of the five senses in this material plane to transitioning through these inner regions until there is only you and God and then of course beyond that only God. So it's a kind of transition from illusion to reality and these different steps of meditation uh, represent the peeling of the onion until you get to the true center, if you will. Hearing the celestial sound current during meditation, a discourse on inner sound meditation. This is material from Shiv Brat Lal, Maharishi Mehi, Swami Sant Seviji, and Swami Vyasanand about inner sound meditation. Useful points from rare writings of the Sant tradition that many may benefit from when it comes to hearing inner sound. And I'm going to begin that actually with a quote from a female guru, a master in the Radhaswami tradition by the name of Yogani Mataji, who said, Listen to the sound that issues forth from the light. I will include her writings in today's edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio. In the Sant tradition, the old way, uh, as taught by Tulsi Sahib of Hathras and those before him, uh, was there were two initiations. The first initiation was to impart to spiritual seekers sacred names or mantras. Uh, when a master gives you sacred names, this is a, a gift, a tremendous gift, a tremendous blessing. Also, in, the initiation includes instruction about inner visualization and 
inner actual seeing accessing the third eye center and the inner light. And this is covered in the first initiation. In the second initiation is instruction about Surat Shabd Yoga or inner sound meditation. And it's done this way because uh, in the old tradition you have people who all live within a certain area uh, affiliated with a certain ashram and a local spiritual master at that ashram and you can go talk to that teacher. This is not a teacher with millions of followers who doesn't answer email, doesn't uh, sit for a conversation with you, too busy, too many people, and is utterly inaccessible. Instead of that, he is a teacher you can go and talk to on a regular basis to connect with anytime you have any spiritual questions about something. And so it's very hands-on, it's very grassroots, it's very local, and when the individual started seeing light in their meditation, then the master would hear of this and say, okay, it's time for you to progress on with the second initiation and learn about the sound aspect of meditation. So it was a, it was a two-fold process, and only after a student or disciple is established in light. They can see light within themselves when they meditate. Only when they are established in light do they then go on to listen for divine sound. Now the reason they do it this way is because uh, they believe that if you start hearing sound without seeing the light uh, that it's a lower kind of sound more of a physical plane hum or vibration of some sort that doesn't uh, lead to spiritual growth or enlightenment. So they don't want people just listening to any sound. They want the disciples to only listen to sound that comes from the light. And that's actually a quote from Yogani Mataji here. Listen to the sound that issues forth from the light. This is a very important point. Uh, when you get to the light, then you can proceed on to the sound and hear the, the right kind of sound that comes from above that leads to spiritual progress and is not just a material plane sound. This is always a very important point that they emphasize. Listen to the sound that issues forth from the light. And I, of course, plan on sharing more from the teachings of Yogani Mataji, uh, which are found in this beautiful book called Enchanted Land, which has been around for many years and has a chapter dedicated to her. Various sorts of sound currents reverberate in the human system, from which the initiate has to pick up the right one and listen to it, otherwise he will go astray and lose his equipoise. The practical guru forewarns his disciple and directs which sound to listen to and which one to discard. That's a passage from Shiv Brat Law on the same question of uh, what sounds to listen to. Uh, certain sounds are considered more divine than others. Uh, it's like going through a labyrinth, you know, and, and getting some guidance from the master, which way to turn, <laughs> if you will. Only, in this case, it's a labyrinth of sounds or tones, and the master at the time of initiation uh, gives the disciple some tips on which sounds to concentrate on and which ones to not listen for. Certain sounds only are advised to meditate upon. And so the soul works their way through these different planes of consciousness. They work their way through the labyrinth and try and avoid detours by focusing on the wrong uh, kinds of sounds. So that's a very important point. Right from the start, when one undertaking Surat Shabd Yoga meditation, that it's not just the listening to any kind of sound. 
Now, of course, if someone has never heard inner sound before and they hear any kind of sound, whether it's like from the material plane, the Taos hum, or some sort of semi-magnetic astral sound of some sort, I mean, it's all pretty amazing, really. But the key is to focus on certain spiritual sounds that the Master reveals. And these sounds tend to pull the soul up and tend to allow uh, uh, free travel, if you will. The soul has uh, free access to higher realms if they pay attention to certain sounds. And those are revealed at the time of Surat Shabd Yoga initiation. I'm coming up on a break. After the break, more on the yoga of sound, inner sound meditation, the sound of light on Spiritual Awakening Radio. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Spiritual Awakening Radio. My name is James Bean. This week's program is titled The Sound of Light, Surat Shabd Yoga Meditation Practice. Inner Light and Sound Meditation Practice. Reiterating the steps and stages of this form of meditation, the paragraph I shared earlier. By practicing devotion through these four techniques, manas japa, also known as simran or mantras or zikr, which is the recitation of a divine name or names, manas dhyana, focus on the divine form or visualizing within oneself one's spiritual master. Three, dristi sadhana, focus on the infinitesimal point, the third eye center, and inner light and four nada sadhana concentration on the inner divine sounds also known as surat shabd yoga the practitioner consecutively transcends the realms of darkness light and sound which cloak the supreme truth the divine reality a passage from swami sant saviji's book harmony of all religions In this, you see the steps and stages, a kind of transition. The repetition of a sacred name is a kind of sound that you generate, that focuses you, gets you centered, and will eventually prepare you for hearing inner sound. The visualization, picturing in your mind's eye the form of your teacher, helps open you up to the possibility of inner seeing, real seeing, real light seen within. The third step is actually that, focusing within, seeing the darkness when you close your eyes and concentrate at the third eye center, and eventually light will blossom, light will appear. And then, and only then, after the light has manifested, one concentrates on inner hearing, transcendental hearing, hearing divine sounds. And so it's a kind of transition from outer to inner, from lower to higher, from generating sound through a mantra that you repeat within your mind and picturing within your mind a form of your teacher. And then eventually real light is seen and real sound is heard. So no visualize, no more visualizing. You know, you just get to the point where you're seeing real light and hearing real sound within yourself during meditation practice. This is, as I mentioned, a reading from a chapter devoted to Yogani Mataji in the book Enchanted Land by David Christopher Lane on the process of Surat Shabd Yoga meditation as well. Mataji exuded a sense of joy and happiness. We talked for more than three hours about a variety of subjects. But I was most intrigued with Mataji's experiences on the inner spiritual planes. I asked her what it was like to leave the body. 
Mataji responded with a beautiful description of how consciousness can be released from the mortal frame by attaching itself to the stream of celestial music radiating from the top of the head and beyond. To do this, she said, one must first be initiated by a genuine mystic who has gained access to the higher realms. They themselves, in other words, have to have done this. And are not just giving you theory, but they must be speaking from experience. Yogani Mataji. The practice itself, although it may take years to master, sounds relatively simple. The body should be kept perfectly still, with one particular posture held for at least three hours. One may choose a cross-legged position like the yogis in the lotus pose, or a more comfortable, relaxed position in a chair. Keeping the back erect and the mind alert, one continuously repeats God's name as given by his or her guru. This Simran, as Madhaji termed it, should be done with one's attention centered behind closed eyes. Coupled with this physical stillness and ceaseless repetition of God's name, the next step is to contemplate the light within. At first, Madhaji pointed out, there will only be darkness, but eventually light will appear in the form of either small flashes or small star-like points. In any case, one should focus on the radiance, keeping one's Simran intact and allowing the light to draw the soul inward. In other words, one is seeing this inner light and one continues to repeat their sacred name or names, these names of God or a name of God. It's a mental repetition and it's called Simran. Keep on repeating your sacred word and contemplating the inner light. Yogani Mataji, the third and most important step, Mataji said, is to listen to the sound that issues forth from the light. It is this internal music which will numb the body and allow the consciousness to leave its ordinary dwelling. By riding this sound current, this current of light and sound, like a fish going upstream, the soul will be able to go back to its original home. On the journey within, however, the soul must be guided by a true master, so as not to be detained in any of the lower illusory regions. According to Madhaji, what near-death patients experience is only the beginning of a vast sojourn into great universes of light, love, and beauty. A paragraph from the book Enchanted Land, a chapter dedicated to Yogani Madhaji, who was speaking with David Christopher Lane at the Radhaswami ashram or mandir located in Hoshiarpur, India many decades ago with some valuable insight into Surat Shabd Yoga meditation practice. You're hearing Spiritual Awakening Radio after the break more on some very important tips about how to listen to the sound and what sounds to pay attention to. The whole process of inner sound meditation. Stay tuned for more Spiritual Awakening Radio after these messages. Spiritual Awakening Radio is heard every week at this time on HealthyLife.net, Positive Talk Radio. My name is James Bean. My website is SpiritualAwakeningRadio.com. At my website, you'll find links to various podcasts of the program available for free on demand anytime. You'll find links to my blog on the website where you can read many different articles my newsletters, 
lots of things from over the years. Links to daily spiritual quotes via social media. There is a donate button at my website and a contact tab. You can send me a message if you like. My website, once again, is at this address, spiritualawakeningradio.com or email me at this address, james at spiritualawakeningradio.com The name of the program this week, The Sound of Light, Surat Shabd Yoga Meditation Practice. Some things I wanted to share on this program as part of this series exploring the yoga of sound, documenting how transcendental hearing as well as seeing is present within the great mystical traditions of the East and in the West, and there are some in India quite fluent with it still here in the 21st century. Shiv Bratlal said various sorts of sound currents reverberate in the human system from which the initiate has to pick up the right one and listen to it, otherwise he will go astray and lose his equipoise. The practical guru forewarns his disciple and directs which sound to listen to and which one to discard. Swami Vyasanand, in his new Kindle e-book called The Inward Journey of the Soul, says only the central sound has the power to attract the consciousness to the center and carry the soul to the center of a higher realm. Other illusory material sounds do not have that magnetism to attract the consciousness to the higher realms. The Masters teach that the world, indeed many realms, are illusion and that on inner planes there are many reflections or copies of higher realities. There are phenomena that can imitate or mimic spiritual experiences. There are even realms that to some extent might appear to be heavens or copies of Sach Khan, the true realm. Hall of Mirrors, Matrix, Labyrinth, astral flypaper. In this world there is the illusion of the master, there is the illusion of the disciple, there is the illusion of satsang, there is the illusion, the illusion of uh, climbing the mountain, a false peak experience where you think you've reached the top and you still have not. There is the illusion of enlightenment, one can stare at a light or contemplate the flame of a candle, then close one's eyes in a darkened room, and continue to see a kind of photo-like retinal image of that candle, an optical illusion of inner light. Some electronic devices or electrical appliances generate white noise, humming sounds, or high-frequency ringing tones and overtones. These, to some extent, can mimic inner spiritual sounds. The illusion of the sound current. Lots of illusions are around us at every turn. Sometimes in the news there have been reports about people hearing a mysterious sound that seems to be coming from nowhere. One of these has been called the Taos Hum. In the philosophy of liberation, Maharishi Mehi Parmhans states that not only are there spiritual sounds associated with heavenly realms, but there are also many vibrations or semi-subtle sounds associated with the gross material realm. He says one should not falsely assume they are accessing the real inner sound current just by hearing any kind of sound that may manifest itself in one's perception during the silence of meditation. Here I use very uh, nuanced language because, uh, well, you might hear the tone generated by a motor in a refrigerator running as you're trying to meditate in a nearby room and think you're hearing a divine tone when it's not, and it's actually a, a sound generated by an electrical device. It's easy to be fooled. It's easy to be fooled by basic phenomena like that. There are sounds due to gross vibrations in the material body. 
to meditate on these gross material sounds and to believe it to be as the full practice of the yoga of sound shows a lack of knowledge of yoga. There are gross material sounds one can hear in the silence of meditation that do not lead one to above, nor lead one to spiritual growth, transformation, or enlightenment. Swami Vyasanand says, This is because only the central sound has the power to attract the consciousness to the center and carry the soul to the center of a higher realm. Other illusory material sounds do not have that magnetism to attract the consciousness to the higher realms." Unquote. I suppose another test might be, does the sound give you peace or tranquility? Or is it just like watching a television show? It doesn't affect you at all. Perhaps that's another test, whether one is hearing a, a spiritual sound or just a material sound. There are inner sounds that one receives instruction from a true master about at the time of initiation into Surat Shad Yoga, inner sound meditation, the yoga of the audible life stream. These sounds are perceived to come from the right side or center and represent the ascending current. Sounds that appear to be coming from the left side are of the descending current flowing downward into the material creation or multiverse. One is instructed to focus on the sound of the ascending current or audible life stream. More on these different currents of sound after the break. You're hearing Spiritual Awakening Radio. Welcome back to the program. This week's edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio is titled The Sound of Light, Surat Shabd Yoga Meditation Practice. In this form of meditation, one is instructed to focus on certain sounds. These sounds are revealed by the living master at the time of initiation. These particular sounds are of the ascending current or audible life stream. Certain sounds that draw the soul up. There are, of course, many other sounds one might hear, but one has to focus on certain sound currents. The reason for this is these sounds, these very special inner divine sounds, if focused upon during meditation practice, will keep pulling the soul's attention up to ever higher and higher levels or regions. These are coming from regions above. Other sounds though mistaken for the sound current, are interesting, miraculous, or even mystical, but will not help the soul ascend or make spiritual progress. There are certain sounds that have been identified as taking one through the labyrinth of the inner realms that let the soul ascend unencumbered, unhindered. Swami Vyasanand, in his new ebook, his new Kindle ebook called The Inward Journey of the Soul, says, quote, I have heard accounts of some practitioners, some practitioners who follow unusual sound meditation practices and claim to hear sounds. However, these gross material sounds are imaginary or generated by metabolic functions and blood circulation. An ear disease called tinnitus can also create a humming or ringing sound that can be mistaken for the inner divine sound." Unquote. Here he speaks of blood circulation, which is kind of a rumbling, roaring sound within going on, but nothing miraculous about it. It's just part of the physical body, not a divine sound. Shiv brought Lal said, the devotee in his spiritual journey upwards hears sweet melodies which attract him. The melodies are a powerful magnetic force which draws the attention inwards and makes it fully attuned to proceed up and up. Unquote. 
Maharishi Mehi and Philosophy of Liberation. Each of the sounds of the centers of the five realms possesses an attribute to draw the consciousness upward to its center. The essential sound or pure spiritual sound has the attribute to draw one's consciousness up to the Supreme Sovereign, God. In The Inward Journey of the Soul by Swami Vyasanand, it says, The question arises, what is the secret of correct technique for Shabd Yoga meditation? Sant Radhaswami says, Focus your consciousness stream on the inner space. You will find the divine sound which will lead you beyond the snares of this illusory world. Unquote. You should focus your consciousness on the inner current in the middle of the eyebrows, the meeting point, which is known as the tenth gate, or third eye, center. The practitioner will attain one-pointedness through this practice. In other words, the subtlest and most luminous sign of the light realm will appear. With that luminous sign, the inner sound will also manifest. So once again, the advice is given. The sound that issues forth from the light is the real divine sound. And this is a sound that comes from beyond the silence. Not from a CD player, not from wind chimes or being fooled by the sound of a refrigerator running or even a real mystical sound that's not one of the true inner sounds but something generated in the physical plane some sort of magnetic astral sound semi-physical plane sound as cool as that might be that people can hear sound beyond the silence even if it's just a physical plane sound there are higher sounds that have been identified by spiritual masters and mystics for many centuries and during initiation into Surat Shabd yoga meditation it is possible to receive instruction about what kind of sounds to listen for in the silence of meditation. Swami Sant Seviji Maharaj in his book Quintessence of Yoga says closing the ears when we hear the divine sound within ourselves is the best approach. There is no harm in it. We can include this along with other practices. The practice of inner sound can go on in the night because there is no noise at that time and the environment is peaceful. When the inner sound merges into the imperishable Supreme Lord, there is the absolute state of soundlessness, the ultimate reality. Unquote. What does it mean to close the ears? Well, there is a secret technique for closing the ears that one can use if you need to, especially at first. But as some masters have said, when you start hearing the inner sound and you focus all of your attention on it, it is like the closing of your outer hearing. Your hearing has shifted from the outer world to the world within. And that, too, is a kind of closing of the outer ears, even if you're not wearing earplugs or clogging your ears up physically in some way. And really, if you're meditating in a quiet atmosphere, so the only thing you're going to hear is the inner sound, that is a kind of closing off. You know, you're, you're not really having an awareness of outer sound. You're just enjoying the blissful practice of hearing the inner sound in a tranquil silence within yourself as you're exploring inner sound during meditation practice. The Sound of Light. Thanks for joining me this week on Spiritual Awakening Radio. Thank you.